Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Article Technology Indonesia channel. On this occasion we are still discussing the same theme with the previous video about boiler classification. If you haven't watched the first part of the video, just click the link in the description of this video. In the second part we will discuss about water tube boilers. In conjunction with the fire tube boiler, the water tube boiler is also included in the boiler type based on the viewpoint of the relative position of the water vapor with the combustion chamber. Water tube boilers have a reverse design with fire tube boilers. This boiler circulates water through the pipelines with a heat source coming from the furnace. A water tank commonly called a steam drum is one of the characteristics of a water tube boiler. Steam drum serves as a water tank that is maintained at a certain level to ensure there is always circulating water to the water pipes. Besides that, the steam drum is also to separate steam from water steam mixture inside the drum. Wet steam coming out of the steam drum will be heated further to produce superheated steam. Water tube boilers have more complex designs and manufacturing techniques than the fire tube boilers. But water tube boilers have one main advantage. They have almost no design limitations for steam production loads. The advancement of material technology and metal welding is the limiting factor for water tube boilers could be built as large as possible. Therefore, water tube boilers are more suitable for large industries that are more demanding high quality and quantity of steam such as the power plants. And here are the different types of water tube boilers based on history and different designs. John Blakey Boiler, 1766. This boiler designed by John Blakey became the forerunner of the water tube boiler. This boiler is composed of a vertical funace with several connected pipes inside, which are made tilted to form a certain angle. The two ends of the pipe are connected to a smaller pipe. This boiler was patented by John Blakey in 1766, but not too popular at the time. James Rumsey Boiler, 1788. The first functional water tube boiler was created by a mechanical engineer from the United States, James Rumsey. He is known to patent several water tube boiler designs, making James Rumsey touted as the inventor of the water tube boiler. One of the most famous designs is a steam-powered boat. The boat, which was then made to cross the Potomac River, was equipped with a water tube boiler. The water tube and the boiler are twisted horizontally, inside a large enough furnace. The steam produced is used to drive a steam piston. The steam piston, using a single shaft, is connected to another piston underneath it. The second piston serves as a water pump, with water from the river as the media where the boat operates. The piston shaft, also connected to a large pendulum. The pendulum is connected to an injector pump and an air pump on the condenser. Steam that enters the steam piston will lift the shaft, so that the water piston also lifted, and sucks the water of the river into the piston cylinder. When the piston reaches the top dead center, a knob on the shaft will touch a stick mechanism, so the control valve will change its position. When the control valve changes its position, the steam inside the cylinder will be pushed out and enter the condenser. The water piston will also be pushed down, so the water comes out of the cylinder passing through the nozzle on the back of the ship, thus creating a force for the ship. When the shaft position down, the injector pump pushes the river water into the boiler, while the air pump pushes the water inside the condenser to exit. Julius Griffith Boiler, 1821. This boiler has a fairly simple design but has a significant impact on the development of the next water tube boiler design. This boiler was designed by Julius Griffith in 1821, which is composed of several horizontal pipes in several levels and placed inside the heat source. The horizontal pipes are connected to the twin vertical pipes on either side. At the very end, there is a last horizontal pipe as a gathering place for steam produced, which then comes out of the boiler. This top horizontal pipeline design will next to be the forerunner of the design of the steam drum in modern water tube boilers.
Joseph Eve Boiler, 1825. The first sectional water tube boiler with well-defined circulation was designed by Joseph Eve in 1825. This boiler composed of several vertical pipes with curve variations in the center of the pipe, two larger horizontal pipes as a water reservoir and a steam reservoir, as well as two large external vertical pipes as a circulating pipe between the steam reservoir on the upper side and the water reservoir on the lower side. These two vertical pipes have a function to ensure good natural circulation of water and steam inside the boiler system between the water pipes, reservoirs and external pipes. Goldsworthy Gurney Boiler, 1826. The Gurney water tube boiler design was patented in 1825, first made in 1826, and tested in 1827 by Simon Goodrich. This boiler is composed of several U-shaped pipes laid with one side in the top position. Each end of the U-pipe is interconnected with a horizontal pipe with a larger diameter, both top and bottom. Then these two horizontal pipes are connected with vertical pipes to ensure the occurrence of water steam circulation. There is also a long and large diameter cylindrical tube, vertically standing connected to the upper and lower horizontal pipes. This cylindrical pipe serves as a water reservoir and water vapor. Stephen Wilcox Boiler 1856. This Wilcox design boiler became the first water tube boiler to use inclined pipe design. These tilted pipes connect the water spaces on the front and back, with a steam room at the top. This boiler design later developed into Babcock and Wilcox boiler design, and dominated the water tube boiler market in the late 19th to early 20th centuries. Spiral Water Tube Boiler If the fire tube boiler develops along with the train development, the water tube boiler design was developed in tandem with car technology. The birth of car technology in 1770 created by Nicholas Joseph Cugnet, encouraged the development of cars in the 1800s that still use steam engines. Most of the car's engines use spiral water tube boilers with different designs. Since then, Spiral water tube boilers have developed into various uses. Spiral water tube boiler designs include Climax boilers, Loon Valley boilers, Monotube boilers, the Baker boiler, Affelt boilers, and many others. D-type boiler. This boiler is called the D-type because the shape of the boiler is similar to the letter D. This boiler is equipped with two tanks, the steam drum on the upper side and the mud drum on the lower side. These two tanks are connected to many water pipes which are partially arranged vertically, and some are arranged in the shape of the letter D. The middle of the D-shaped pipes has a function as a combustion chamber. Type A Boiler Still because the design is similar to the form of a letter, the A-type boiler is named because the similar design with a letter A. This boiler has one steam drum but with two water tanks below. This boiler has a slimmer design than a D-type boiler, however an A-type boiler cannot produce higher steam quality than the D-type for the same dimensions. O-type boiler the O-type boiler is the last type of water tube boiler whose design is similar to one of the letters. This O-shaped boiler has a symmetrical shape with the position of the above steam drum and water tank below. Both are connected with symmetrical water pipes so that in the middle become the combustion chambers. This O-type boiler is claimed to be able to produce steam faster than the D-type. The low maintenance requirements are also another advantage of this boiler. Babcock and Wilcox Boiler. As the name implies, the Babcock and Wilcox Boiler was developed by a firm with the same name as the boiler. This boiler design was developed and patented in the mid-19th century, after the Babcock firm acquired the Wilcox Boiler design as we mentioned before. This boiler has only one tank, the steam drum positioned at the top of the boiler. 
The steam drum is partly filled with water and the other part contains saturated steam. The typical design of this boiler is the water pipes that are designed to be tilted 15 degrees. This slope serves to ensure the occurrence of natural circulation of water and steam in the boiler. On top of the inclined pipes there is another pipe as a superheater tube section. Saturated steam escaped from the steam drum to be further heated to achieve superheated quality on this pipe section. The flow of combustion gases in the boiler is made tortuous to maximize heat absorption from the flue gas to the water steam. Stirling Boiler The Stirling Boiler is one of the predecessors of the water tube boiler. These boilers were popularly used in the early 1900s, and are very difficult to find at this time. This boiler has the characteristics of using two kinds of water tanks, steam drum at the top with an amount that is always more than the second tank, the mud drum or water tank at the bottom of the boiler. The characteristics of the design make the Stirling boiler can be classified based on the number of the drums. There are three drums with two steam drums and one mud drum, four drums with three steam drums and one mud drum, and five tanks in the form of three steam drums at the top and two mud drums at the bottom of the boiler. The more number of tanks, the higher ability to produce more steam. However, this boiler is old-fashioned and is no longer used because it has relatively lower efficiency values than modern boilers. Ooh. Yarrow Boiler The Yarrow Boiler were developed by Yarrow and Company from London, and is widely used on ships, especially warships in the years of World War II. Its compact size makes it possible for use as a portable power generation units that can be transported during World War II. In order to be transported at that time, boiler, turbine, condenser, and other auxiliary equipment are installed in the railway wagon. Thornycroft Boiler This boiler was designed by the ship manufacturer John I. Thornycroft & Company, the special design of this boiler is to use just one steam drum on the upper side, with three downcomers so that it is arranged similar to the M-formation boiler. However, due to the design of several pipes that have sharp bending, it has risk of leaking quickly. Not only because of the possibility of thermal stress, but also because of its own difficulties when need to be cleaned. Because of these weaknesses, this boiler was not as popular as Yarrow Boiler. In the early days of its development, water tube boilers were not as fast developed as fire pipe boilers. This is because water tube boilers require more complex design calculations and manufacturing techniques. But the main advantages of fire tube boilers that have almost no maximum capacity limit, making the development in the next period, only need to wait for the birth of modern welding and materials technologies. After electricity was discovered, then the construction of steam power plants began intensively in the early 20th century, the Stirling boiler type still dominated. To meet this need, numbers of Stirling boilers are built at once in parallel so they can produce more steam. Why isn't the Stirling boiler made larger, and bigger, so it can produce more steam? The main reason was the use of fire bricks as the boiler wall. Fire brick walls would certainly be troublesome if you have to be arranged too high, as well as widened, following the boiler design if you want to be enlarged. Beside that, this large-sized wall must be able to isolate the heat energy of the combustion chamber, to ensure maximum heat absorption in the boiler. Gradually, new innovations were born to replace fire brick walls. The advancement of pipeline material and welding technology are also driving the advancement of boiler wall technology. Two band tile boiler walls became the initial innovation of the boiler wall design revolution. Found in the 1920s, this boiler wall combines a 6-inch diameter pipe with 2.5-inch thick tiles or 4.5-inch thick fire brick. Two band tiles are arranged alternately, and the outer side of the wall is insulated to maintain boiler efficiency. The existence of the tube in the boiler wall has a function to cool the wall so that the thickness of the fire bricks can be reduced from the previous thickness which can reach 22 inches. Since that time, the boiler design continued to grow in both size and capacity. In the late 1920s and early 1930s, 
the appearance of the flat study to ban the loose tube while constructed boilers. This design was able to increase the absorption of boiler heat. So in those days, boilers that used those two designs were able to receive the highest heat generated from coal combustion. Large changes in the water tube boiler wall design occurred in the late of 1950s and early 1960s. Since then, and are still used today, water tube boiler walls made from long steel tube which ranged in a row and welded each other with certain widths of steel membrane bar between every tube. This design is much easier to fabricate because making every wall panels can be done at the workshop. Then the wall panels can be much easier to assemble when build the boiler. The process of building boilers has become much more practical, time-saving, and certainly effective in cost. Not only that, the main advantage of this boiler wall tube design makes the water tube boilers could be built even larger and bigger. Known this day, huge water tube boilers are capable to produce superheated steam of more than 4,000 tons per hour. Once through boiler is a concept of water tube boiler that does not occur in non-vaporizing water circulation. That is, each water molecule only passes through the boiler pipes once. This concept greatly increases boiler efficiency because it is no longer requires a steam drum as a water and steam separator, so there is no need for additional boiler circulation pumps. This boiler concept is actually not new. The boiler design was once patented in 1824. But the first commercial application of this boiler could only be done in 1923, by a Czechoslovakia inventor, Mark Benson. At that time, Benson only could build 1.3 kg per second boiler capacity. The once through boiler continues to grow until now. Supercritical and ultra supercritical boilers have used this concept. So even though this boiler is used in power plants with a capacity of 1000 MW, the efficiency can reach 46%. Okay. That's all for the second part of our discussion about boiler classification. And don't forget to click like this video and subscribe to this channel, Article Technology Indonesia.